Um, so, um, digital identities, uh, it's, a, it's a hot topic today. Uh, how to secure transactions online and make sure we are talking to the right people. Uh, it's very important for many different kinds of businesses, uh, for banking, uh, with a very well-known KYC process. It's also very important for C2C platform to create trust uh, in communities, and we, we see it in many different kinds of businesses. Um, I'm a um, founder of a company, co-founder of a company called Abel, um, that is working in uh, this uh, environment, so uh, of the digital identity uh, verification uh, topic. And uh, I previously worked uh, in Gemato on those topics. Um, so um, I'm happy to to present uh, my vision of uh, of the digital identity uh, today. So first, th there is an issue. Uh, identity fraud, uh, it's growing every day. So uh, I'm, I'm just sharing a few figures that are quite focused on France, but uh, it's quite the same abroad. So what is the size of, uh, of this problem? We are talking about 400,000 identity fraud per year uh, in France, and it's very difficult to estimate uh, the amount of uh, those identity fraud, how much does it cost to society. Uh, we found figures that goes from 5 to 20 billion, so it's a it's quite big range, uh, but, but the message here is that um, it's, it's, it's a big problem and it's costing a lot to our society. Uh, Interpol uh, is saying that this is the fastest growing crime uh, in the planet. Uh, people want to be anonymous when they're doing bad things. So uh, when you're talking about robberies, when you're talking about terrorism, when you're talking about money laundering, uh, people always hide who they are. Um, so, um, so it's growing fast. Um, it's even more and more growing with the digitalization of the economy. If you are sitting uh, at your place uh, in your uh, sofa, uh, you don't take any risk if you try to hide your identity. You're not in front of someone. So it's easier uh, to do it online and fraudster feel safer. So. Okay. With the digitalization of the economy, uh, we've seen new trends uh, with online identity verification. How do we uh, verify the identity of people online? So today you, are, you maybe have done it already. Uh, for instance, if you have rented a flat in Airbnb or if you are a driver in blah blah car. Um, so you're asked to take a picture of your ID and then a picture of your face. So this is structured with API and it's quite easy to integrate. Um, and uh, another solution is to make a call with someone. Uh, uh, show me your ID. Ah, oh, okay, it's you, perfect, through Skype. So those are the main ways uh, it's done today. Um, people uh, have already tried it. So we have done a study at Hubble. We have uh, interviewed 600 users. And uh, we asked them, have you already tried those technologies? 40% uh, of them told us, yes, we have we have tried it once. Um, it's not so much, but still, uh, it's coming. Um, it's, um, it's more and more present in people's life. And we have asked them another question. Uh, did you like it? Do you want to do it again? 95% of them told us that, uh, yes, uh, they prefer that rather than going in a branch or doing it face to face. It's convenient. It's easy. Uh, I do it from my sofa. I like it. So the message here is that uh, people who've tried it want it to become uh, a standard and more and more people are trying it. So um, if you do the math, uh, people want those solutions to onboard uh, in secure transactions. So we should see them more and more um, because it's nice UX and people want it. The problem is that uh, there is a question of security and uh, regulators, uh, they don't like money laundering, they don't like uh, terrorism, they don't want that. So they are uh, creating a framework uh, to uh, regulate uh, the digital identities. So the European Union has done their job uh, quite well. They have, um, they have written the EIDAS uh, regulatory framework 
um, which uh, is quite complex, um, quite hard to read. Uh, I've read it, so I can explain it uh, quite simply. Um, so the, the EIDAS framework focuses on public services, but more and more uh, it's going to be used uh, in the private sector uh, because it's a good framework and it means that government recognizes this identity. So how does it work? You have a citizen that wants uh, to access the public services online. Okay? So he's going to say, hey, my name is John Smith. I'm going to present you a digital identity. This is a proof of my ID. And the public service will say, okay, uh, this is a digital identity, but uh, how, how am I sure it's yours? Okay? So we will ask him to authenticate. This is an A. Okay? So please authenticate John Smith. John Smith will do it. He can use his face, he can use his fingerprint, he can use his phone. Um, simple authentication. And then uh, we will generate proof of the transaction. This is the signature part. Okay? So EI DAS, you see digital identity, authentication, signature. Those are the three steps. It's quite common. Uh, there's uh, no surprise in that. Uh, this framework is used everywhere in the world. Okay? Uh, the NIST in the United States has also regulated uh, a similar framework, and the basis are the same. Uh, it's digital identity, authenticate, sign. Um, so just to put in place the basis. One comment about that um, is, um, so it's mainly focused on public services. It's um, also uh, important to be cross member states. So it's going to be valid everywhere in the EU. And private sector is starting to uh, integrate this framework. So ACPR in the banking environment has already integrated um, uh, the EIDAS framework in the Code Monétaire. So uh, it's, it's coming everywhere. How do we do that? How do we build that? Because I think we are here for that. Uh, we can use API, of course. Uh, th there are five main technical blocks uh, to build a, a digital identity framework. The first one is uh, you need to verify the identity of the people you have in front of you to create his identity. He's telling you it's John Smith. You need to check that. Um, then you issue the digital identity and you store it somewhere. Uh, somewhere secure is better. Um, then you allow him to authenticate, so he's able to reuse uh, the digital identity you have issued. And then you allow him to sign, okay? So we have the chain. It's important also to manage the life cycle of the identity, because if you have enrolled people five years ago, maybe you need to revoke the certificates. Maybe, um, let's say, you have enrolled them for driving. Maybe he has lost his driving license. So you need to have some life cycle management. So we're building a chain uh, with five main technical blocks, with quite different actors uh, on each block today. It's not uh, don't have one actor doing everything uh, in most of the case. And those chains, they need to be secured, of course. So EIDAS has said uh, there is... Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> EIDAS has defined that. So the chain can be of low security, of substantial security, of strong security. And it will depend on the usage. Okay? If you are, want to do uh, healthcare, uh, you need strong security. If you are enrolling for uh, riding a car, maybe substantial will be enough. Okay? So it depends on the usage. But for sure, the weakest link of the chain is the security of the chain. Okay? If you are very weak in storing the identity, it means the whole chain will be weak. So we need to build uh, some, some, some secure chain. And today, issuing a certificate, storing it, having secure authentication and secure signature, it's quite cracked. I mean, uh, we have solution in the market, uh, things exist. We have an issue in verifying the identity of people, especially online. How do you do that when you have never seen the guy is presenting an ID? How do you check it's real? Okay. How do you create, in the first place, a digital identity? So, I have already mentioned two solutions that exist. Uh, taking a picture of an ID and taking a picture of a face. Um, this is very easy to use. Uh, people love that. But it's not very secure, because how do you make a difference between a photocopy of an ID 
and a real one with one image. It's very easy to Photoshop an ID. Uh, we've tried, I mean, uh, you just put uh, with some scotch, uh, patafix, I don't know the, the, the word in, in English, a fake picture and it passes in most solutions. So um, the security of those solutions are low. Okay, uh, to, to be clear, and it has been uh, said by uh, the ANSI, so the regulator uh, in France regarding security topics. Nice, but not secured. Here, it's better, okay, when you have someone in, in front of you, uh, you have a video, you can talk, you can look at people's behavior, it's far better. Uh, but it's not convenient, it's very expensive. Uh, because uh, you have operators, uh, you have hours, you need to, to make an appointment, so it's difficult to scale that. Um, so neither of them are, are, are perfect. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Hubble, uh, just saying what we are doing and, and, and what we believe. Uh, we believe um, video and movement is the right way to verify identity of people because you need a lot of data. One image will never be enough. Okay? Video, you have hundreds of images. You can look, you can see if there are holograms, you can see if a face is in 3D. Uh, so it's, it's the kind of data that we need. Uh, you don't need an operator. Uh, algorithm can do a lot of things. Cars can drive. I mean, you can, uh, with computer vision, um, verify identity and, and, and machines can do that very well to check if the ID is real, if there are holograms, to do face matching, etc. It's, it's, they can do it. So we're building uh, a video-based automated uh, platform. So it's, um, it's live <laughs> and uh, it allows us to, uh, to verify in an API way uh, identities uh, sexually. Uh, with, uh, with this mean. Okay. I, I can discuss with you if you're interested more. I don't want to, to take too much time uh, on this topic, but uh, just to share. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to, to share another point, um, which is if you want to enroll people and, and build digital identity framework, uh, there are several challenges that needs to be taken into account. So first, uh, you need to have people uh, that enroll. You need to have some kind of penetration. Uh, the first step in terms of usability is going to be key. If it's in hell, if you need to go, um, I don't know, let's take an example to a post office, for instance, um, it's, it's going to be hard for user to, to, to penetrate a lot. Um, you need security also. Uh, because if you don't trust the first environment, then uh, your identity has no value. It's, it, it's, it's useless. Um, another point is that people will need to reuse them. Uh, if you want to authenticate, they will need to, uh, to maybe have an app on their phone uh, to be able to reuse it. But they don't use it so often. Uh, I mean, you use... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You use how many times do you verify your identity per year? I mean, uh, five times, ten times? Uh, it's not a lot, actually. If you need to think to have an app on your phone, it's difficult uh, to, to, to bring stickiness in this business. Um, other, another point is that uh, people, they don't trust everybody with their identity information. Um, for instance, Evo, they don't know us. I mean, um, why should I trust this company? Uh, they will trust uh, Société Générale. They will trust BNP. They will trust La Poste. They might trust Facebook or Google, okay? Because those are well-known brands. And uh, they think, yeah, it's secure. Oh, I've known them for years, okay. Um, so if we look at the chain, uh, we're seeing that uh, the GAFA are well, quite well positioned in this business. Um, they have the authentication brick, they are everywhere. Uh, so if you need to authenticate, there is a Facebook Connect button. Uh, you can authenticate with your fingerprint on your iPhone, for instance. So the authenticate brick, they are everywhere and they are already integrated with many services provider. They are well known, people know them, they are, they are in the game. And they are moving quite slightly 
into verifying the identity of people. Um, last year, Facebook bought a company called Confirm.io, which is a company that basically uh, provides services in API ways with, uh, I take a picture of an ID and I take a picture of my face and I know who I am. They are deploying it in emerging countries, like in India. Um, we're seeing this trend also with Apple. So with Apple Pay, they are clearly in the banking business for authentication. Uh, they have it also with the Apple ID. And uh, they are developing quite good technology regarding facial recognition. Okay? Um, we are seeing identity database, etc. in China only relying on that. Though they are slightly moving uh, toward this. The question I'm asking is, um, Yes, do we want uh, those actors uh, to, uh, to take care of our identities, uh, especially in Europe? Uh, do we think that uh, the governments still have their place uh, for that, especially for public services and uh, healthcare and uh, those kind of things? Maybe we should ask our question. Myself, I have an answer, so I, I think that we should build digital identity framework that are European, RGPD compliant, and that um, are not managed by the GAFA. So there are initiatives uh, with, for instance, La Poste, uh, with creating digital identity framework. There are also initiatives, an initiative uh, which is quite nice, which is called uh, Mobile Connect. Um, this is an app. And we have built a framework in France called France Connect that allows a uh, digital identity provider uh, to, to be all connected. This is some kind of, of a node of, uh, of identity. Uh, but there is clearly a question of business model. Uh, they're struggling. How do I finance that? Uh, is it a freemium? Do, we have, do people need to pay? Uh, can they do it? So. Um, Many questions here, uh, I'm, I'm asking the room, um, and uh, I'm, yes, I, I just wanted uh, to share those points. I'm, I'm done, I'm completely available to, to answer uh, uh, your questions.